as humans, when there's money in the bank account, we have this thing, ah, it will keep coming. Even though you don't know, like a million must be also coming next month. Then next month it's 50,000 shillings. Then you're shocked, then you have a car. But you told everyone, is like, oh, he's so successful. Have you seen what he's driving? Then you're caught up in the social status trap. Yeah? If your 100 bob per month has not been able to buy you a car, then you, don't, you can't afford a car. Simple, simple as that, even though the business may be sitting. And this is a discipline. Sometimes the business can sit with a lot of cash. Yeah, because money, maybe it was money you've not been paid for three months, so it comes at once. That discipline you've got to, you, you've, got, you've got to have. I don't think you are the best person to manage the finances of the business when you're running the business. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> you've got to have someone. You know why they're called accountants? Because they keep you accountable. You've got to have someone who look at you badly. They don't have to be permanent employees, but a person you take to your books at the end of the month and they, they give you a slap. That is why they're called accountant. Accountability. Because you yourself, you won't, or you'll get emotional. You'll accept pricing that doesn't work. You'll be like, we just, services customer will get many more. You'll buy into so many things around money for the business that are actually not healthy. So you need that person who's not looking at the emotions of the business like you, or your emotions of your personal life, but it's just after the accountants are really special. They are really after the best interest of the business. Good accountants, really after the best interest of the business, because they don't get caught up in your emotions. Yeah, so they are very important. Have it up. Remember, taxes are for real. I'm not going to run a tax class now, but there's no shrinking into greatness. You don't grow business by avoiding taxes. Nobody ever grew a business with a tax evasion strategy. <laughs> <laughs> and the, today we're talking about entrepreneurship, not side hustles. Yeah? So that's what I'm saying. Taxes are for real. Face it, they are for real. But nobody ever grew a business by shrinking into greatness. Just understand that. How long can you hide? What kind of growth are you going to have if you can hide when you go to ABSA and ask? ABSA is one of our clients. But they're going to ask for a tax compliance certificate. Then we, uh, what will we do? What do we do at that point? Yeah? So you can't shrink into greatness. So if you want clients like APSA, pay taxes. Simple. Yeah? You want investors coming your way, they'll ask you for a tax compliance certificate. No investors are interested in people who are not paying taxes. No matter how, what you disagree about the taxes. And as I said, discipline. Fear is going to be there all the time. No matter what stage you're in, you're going to feel afraid. And for me, I just consciously did what I had to do in spite of being scared. And there are some moments that come when you just speak back to the fear. And I remember there's a time a client was, again, I was being asked, why should it be you? You are more expensive than anybody else. And I blurted out, I am the best. That is why you would want to give me the job. Of course, the fear took over and I was shaking. And I was like, Sheke, how can you say this? But then after they called and gave me the business, because I think we're in the job, whatever you are doing, you're in the job of being the best. Otherwise, there's nothing we're doing here. We're not in the job of mediocrity. Be the best. And those are the things that start dealing with fear. When you start, at, and by the time I said this, it's not because they were my first client. I had done proof of concept and been tested. Yeah? So there's a rite of passage in these kind of statements as well. Yeah? But then you start understanding this is the value I'm giving and I'm the best. Not because I don't make mistakes, but I am out to do the best I can whenever I can. That car on the road, the car that you like, the day you decided you like it, what happened? You start seeing it everywhere. Yeah, that's vision. That is exactly what vision does. But it was always there. But until you identified it, you didn't pick up on the information needed for that vision. So when you talk about mindset, remember it's the mind. Our minds are extremely powerful. Yeah? So you just start picking up. You have a conversation and something clicks because there's a vision. So it doesn't matter where you are in your journey, you must have a vision. And there's no judgment about what that vision is. It is yours. It is seeing ahead. And it makes you now want to set up structures, processes that line up with the vision, actions that line up with the vision. And it can be anything. It can be, you know, the things that people think, like my, when I started, when I moved from one-on-one -on -one clients, I just wanted to have a training center. Yeah, why well, that was one. And the second thing was, I wanted to ensure that I can go on holiday and the business runs without me. That was another vision I had. And it does, it did. Because it started changing the way I did things. 
how I hired, how I set up structures and processes. And vision makes you a continuous learner. You will always learn when you're having vision.